podcasts. I hope you're well. Thanks for being there. An always interesting hour of your calls to come on whatever it is bothering you. Tell us and the listening faithful. It'd be great to chat. And here, as always, to sprinkle his wisdom over affairs, former Rams goalkeeper Eric Steele. Eric, evening to you. Good evening, Chris. I am ready to sprinkle. Big star. (laughs) Good. That's what we like to hear. Because it's all getting a little bit nervy again, isn't it? Six wins in eight and then no wins in five. One goal scored in that time. It's not the form you want approaching the last 10 games of the season. That's the championship. That's why we've been in the bottom half. That's why we are where we are. And it is. It's the reality check that you can get carried away with the wins. Uh, But deep down, we always knew this was going to be a fight and a scrap to the end. And I think that's what we are. We're back in the little bit of a dogfight to get that uh, necessary. I agree with Wayne Rooney. Four wins. I mean, I've said all along, 50 points should be way enough. Um, But at the moment, after watching us play, it's getting the goals. It's it's winning games. And it's... But just at the moment, everything seems to have dried up. Chances, people taking the chances. So, yeah, there's concern. But uh, I still think we'll do it. I think we'll be fine. Yeah, interesting that Wayne Rooney, we'll hear from him a little bit later in his press conference today, did state 50 points. Well, he didn't say 50. He said four wins is what we want. Four wins from the last 10 games. It would take Derby to 50 points. And you sometimes, you have to... Well, you don't often hear managers actually say things like that, Eric. They're reluctant to put targets and, and points totals on things. But Rooney was quite was quite open about that. I think it's probably a reality check to, to the squad to say, look, you know, you, if, you, if you start getting worried, concerned, what he's trying to do, I think it's a little bit of a positive message that you've got to go and win four games. Now, who wants to do that? And I think what he's going to say privately is probably saying to them, right, who's going to step up the plate? Because at the moment, I can't pick a front three that can get me the goals I need. I think we're okay defensively. I think the back four of the goalkeeper situation is fine. I don't know what our listeners, our texters believe. I have got a concern in the middle of the park, but I definitely have a concern in the wide areas. Uh, We're starving Kazim of service. Uh, We're playing Waggon where I don't think he's happy. So I think that's what he's probably saying is four wins, but here's the gauntlet. Who wants to be in the team that gets the four wins? Uh, because really he can throw it at him now. Ten games to go. Some of you are playing for contracts. Some of you are playing for your careers. Some of you might be going back to your parent clubs. Or do you want to convince me and the staff that you want to be part of Derby next year when we're going to push, as he said on his preview before the game on Saturday, to get promotion next year? So he's got his ambitions, Mm. I think, based around four wins, rebuild, and then let's go again next year. And I think that's a massive, massive message to the whole squad. 0800-145-6161. 0800-145-6161. Your call's appreciated on anything you want to talk about, really. can be any of the topics discussed there. can be something new you want to throw at Eric. He's, he's always open to questions. Uh, he's always open for a good old chat. It's why we're here for the hour. 81333 is the text number. Derby at the front of your message. And at BBC Derby Sport on Twitter, also live on the BBC Radio Derby Sport Facebook page as well, if you'd like to contribute in that manner. We've got Ben and we've got Callan kicking us off tonight. So let's start with Callan. Evening to you. Evening, gents. How are you doing? Yeah, not too bad. Cheers yourself. Excellent. Yeah, no, we're okay. Thank you. We're okay. What do you make of it all? Um, I'm probably stating the obvious a bit, but I think it needs reiterating. I think the overtake needs to conclude as soon as possible because I think it's one of the many factors that's contributed to the drop in form. So you're correlating the continued lack of news about the takeover with, with Derby's turmoils this season? Yeah, very much so. Because I think, I mean, I've been in a job myself, obviously very different to football, where there's change of ownership coming into play and it comes into your work a little bit. You know, you there to do a job and your mind's on other things, you know, uncertainties to whether you're going to be played as a player. Um, and I think that it's, it's a distraction you don't want from, it's a distraction you don't want when you're playing the football. Just on that, because I, I, just to, to preempt the questions that will come our way, we heard last week that Deventure Holdings were issued an ultimatum from Mel Morris: complete the deal, or we're going to go elsewhere. And we're not sure when that ultimatum expires. We believe it's in the coming days, and then we'll see what transpires. It's certainly going to be soon, whether it's Sheikh Khalid and Co. or, or negotiations maybe begin 
with someone else. Eric, this was often a question thrown at you in the early part of, of the Sheikh Khalid negotiations. Just how much of an effect will it be having on the playing squad? And just how much will all of this uncertainty, and there has been uncertainty for the players, given that a lot of them weren't paid for a period over Christmas, and how much that affects the way they actually play the game on, on a Saturday? Well, I think I think the caller he makes a very valid point is that ultimately when you've got something as big as this, where you know the club is, for, is up for sale, the deal, as we kept getting told, was happening Christmas, October, Christmas, then it was going to be done. But then once the once wages don't get paid, once there's a bit of controversy where, you know, they're, they're wanting answers from the club, they can't get answers from B, BZI. The only contact they've got is to speak to Stephen Pearce or Mel. So ultimately, yeah, I think it did affect them over the Christmas, January period. Once them wages got paid January and then February, obviously Mel stepped in because, as we know now, BZI really weren't fulfilling their part of the bargain. So I think the call is right. It will affect people. Um, but what we have seen is they've got to put that aside. As difficult as it is, and it'll be where they're go- they'll be going home and families will be saying, have, we, have you been paid? You know, have you, are we going to get paid next month? It's a natural thing that it would affect. Um, but... They've got to be professional, and in the end, in order to get this club through, we've got to be a championship club, otherwise we won't get the buyers. So I think, yep, yeah, it's going to affect. It has done, um, but I think over that time during January, we had a good January when they really did knuckle down and get results. Mm. So ultimately, they've got to put it aside, Chris, but I agree with the call. Eh? It's, it's going to be always there in the background. That's the problem, Chris. Uh, Callan, I guess the counter to that is it, it, it wasn't a concern when Derby were winning six games out of eight and were second in the form table. So what do you think has changed in, in the time between the, the two runs of form, that the six wins in eight, albeit Rooney said today that, yeah, it was six in eight, but we didn't play very well in a couple of those games. Pinpointed the Wickham game as an example of they were a little bit fortuitous to get the win. Why the difference between six and eight and then no wins in five and only scoring one goal? I think Bielitz, the loss of Bielitz key. Mm. I mean, when he came back, he was he was fantastic. And I think his link play with uh, Kozwiak, the Polish winger. Yeah. Um, mm. Yeah. I, I think I think him going was certainly one of the many things. Yeah. That's a good point. And I think Jozwiak missed him definitely on the field because I think he he was a voice. He was like. Certainly, Jozwiak's form has slipped, dropped away dramatically, hasn't it? So, yeah, I think Bilic would probably forget that, that he's, it was his performance. But also, I think he would have an effect upon um, Jozwiak, having been teammates at national level. But Bilic, well, that's the problem, because that's the conundrum we have in midfield. You know, we can't get that balance right. Uh, Jason Knight came off on Saturday. You know, Shinny has probably been our most effective. It's getting them other two that's going to play in there. Plus, added to the, the wide areas, all of a sudden have dried up in terms of creating. And we've had fullbacks. So we've had loss of form over the four or five games, which is the worrying point. We need to get back to some consistency and get that run going again. Uh, but ultimately, you, you're, you're always going to lose. Somebody like Bielik is massive, massive to the team. But they've got to get on with it. And at the moment, we're waiting to see who's going to step up and do it. Um, it probably becomes the team effort rather than individual effort. Callan, four wins, Rooney reckons, and Derby will be safe. Get to that 50-point mark. Do you reckon it will be around 50 that, that is survival this year? And if it is, do you back Derby to, to go and get the job done? Yeah, I think, well, they've got to approach every game with a winning mentality, haven't they? Certainly when you're at the position that we're in. Um, I, I think, yeah, four wins is probably on the mark, really. If we can get more than that, then most definitely we've done it. Derby have proven in this bonkers season that when, when we least expect it, they go and whack in a performance, don't they? So it, will it take something like that against a Brentford side who are obviously playing well? They're, they're looking at, at the automatic promotion spots. They've got a striker in Ivan Tony who's got, what, I think 26 goals this season. Derby, as a collective, have only managed 25. But it was nil-nil down in London, wasn't it? They kept them quiet on that night. What kind of game are you expecting tomorrow? Yeah, I think what you alluded to earlier with it being a team effort rather than an individual shining, I think it, for us it's probably going to take an individual to get a goal, most mm-hmm. likely Kazin. Um, but I, I think we've got it in us to pull it off, most definitely. Yeah. It's just on the day, if everybody's had space is there, then we, uh, yeah, our favour is to have a good go. Eric, I like that. You see, you see, Chris. No, that's the gentleman. He's like me. You know, the glass is always half full. I, I think whenever we play these top six, top eight teams, we prove it. 
Look at the league table. You know, we give we give a great account of ourselves in both the Watford games. We're beating yeah. Swansea. We're drew, we're drew Car- with Brentford. Cardiff ruined that though, Eric. I was with you until yeah, Cardiff. Yeah, I did. Yeah, Bournemouth. We went to Bournemouth. <laughs> got a result. Yeah, we're beating Middlesbrough. Sorry, it is. It's the facts are there. Now, what, what is that the edge that Wayne's trying to say in order to get above the mid table and start challenging the other end? You've got to have, you've got to have that belief. You've got to have that belief week in week out. And we don't seem to do that. I mean, mm. Brentford at the moment they're not they're not playing as well as they were, which is no. probably a good thing. They've lost two out of five. Uh, he's scratching a little bit in terms of um, when Canos isn't in the team. I'm starting to wonder why, because uh, he's been a major threat in the first half of the season. So yeah, listen, the, the, the games are coming thick and fast for Brentford. The same. So we hope in a way will they have an off night? It's our job to make sure if they are going to have an off night, we are really back on where we should be. But again, we're back to it. Selection of the team is going to be vital mm. for Wayne. And at the moment, you, that is a difficult, difficult job to pick the team that can go and beat Renford. Lastly, but, Callan, what was... Oh, go, no, go on. Do you want to come in on that? No, sorry, obviously Chris, not. Sorry, that's me. Yeah, yeah. Well, I thought I, I, may have, <laughs> I, I, I may have heard an errant noise and thought you wanted to, to come back in on that. Um, but if you don't, don't worry. Uh, but lastly to you, when you're back in at Pride Park, what, what do you value most as a supporter? Entertaining football? Do you want to go to Pride Park and be entertained? Or do you want to just see your team win? I think same for everybody. It's three points, isn't it? However we get there, it's, it's three points a game. Mm. So you take three points, come what may. Fair enough. I only ask this because poor old Barnsley seem to be marked out as this the sort of anti anti footballers that they are, and yet they're they're sitting quite pretty at the moment. So it was uh, it was only in the aftermath of that game where they won the game, or, or rather they, they they drew, but they've been on that brilliant run, and yet everyone seemed to level lots of criticism at them because the way they played wasn't particularly entertaining. Uh, I think, anyway, I think that's a bit unfair, really, because I think when they're in a similar position to us, it's it's survival. So I think however you get it is is fair game. Fair enough. Callan, thank you for kicking us off. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Good call, Callum. Thank you. 0800 145 6161 is the phone number. 81333 on text. A few of your messages now. And then we've got David, Neil and Ben all to speak to. And Marcus says, seems that the only midfielder capable of a defence splitting pass is Louis Watson. He's only 19 and has only had two sub appearances. This has been a problem for some time. Well, Wayne Rooney obviously likes Louis Watson and you can see why. In the games that he has played and featured briefly, he has shown glimpses of quality, especially with with looking forward and being able to find forward players with those intricate passes. Will he play tomorrow? Again, Rooney hinted that, well, he actually said outright, I've got no qualms in putting him straight in. If, If it needs it, I will put Louis Watson in from the start. So we'll see if he does get a game tomorrow. Steve says in the 23 games without Christian Bielik, we have played, uh, we've only got four wins. Over a full season, we would only have 35 points and be relegated. In the 13 games he has played, we've won six and drawn three, which over a full season would give us 75 points, which would see us in the playoffs. I know one player doesn't make a team, but this is a big reason in the change in our season, as Callan was saying there. Uh, Jim says two points from five games continue like that and we will be down would Eric say that Rooney has to take any responsibility whatsoever just quickly on that it, it, it's, it has been over the last however many games a very much a, a month of two halves isn't it that six wins in eight and then no wins in five and we're all scratching our heads Eric as to why that has been the case and I know that there is lots of criticism towards the, the chopping and changing of the team and the various formations and not really settling on on one one way of playing and, and one formation albeit Rooney's argument to that every time we ask him is it's flexibility I like the idea of having a team that can play several different ways yeah I, I don't see anything wrong in that um, but what tends to happen is that it's when the changes within the systems uh, happen in the last four or five games there's been a mass change of personnel. I think Wayne will look back, hand on heart, he look at Cardiff and go, got it wrong. We've not really recovered from Cardiff yet. We did terrific, really, to go to Barnsley and do what we did. We've not recovered from the Cardiff win uh, when we really were beaten. Um, so I think, in answer to that, I think, yes, we've got a. I I think the team selection has been important, but I think there's nothing wrong in, in being flexible. You know, we've, when we've played 3-4-3, three, People have come on here regularly and said, no, that's the best formation when we play 3-4-3. We'll get the best out of Burn and Buchanan. The last time we did it, they couldn't cross to save their lives. They all of a sudden had lost their form. That's what ma- that's what managers in this league have to face. And in the end, I can see why, he, in the moment, he's struggling to think about who are his best players in the wide areas mm-hmm. to start giving us some of that service that we need. 
And I think that's why. He's always said he wants to be flexible. We've won games playing with the four and with the two sitting and the one in front and the three up front. We've done that. We've also won games with 3-4-3. Three, three. So I don't blame him for being flexible. I think you have to be. Brentford will come here tomorrow. They can change two or three ways they play with the players they've got. I think it's important in this league that you have to do that. We went to Barnsley last week and just battled it out. Yeah. All credit. You know, it was a battle. That's all it was, Chris, wasn't it? It was. It was a battle. But then we have gone to places, like we've already said, and we've gone and played some football. We've beaten Swansea, Middlesbrough, Bristol City at home with some really good football. That was playing with a four. That wasn't playing with a, a three. So there are arguments both ways. But I still believe this is the biggest, biggest decision he makes uh, over the last two, three weeks on his team selection on Wednesday. Oh, sorry, tomorrow, Tuesday. Tomorrow, yeah. It's easy to lose track of days at the moment, Eric. Yeah, tomorrow, Brentford, Saturday, Stoke, and then it's the international break. And we can all forget yeah. about Derby for a little bit. <laughs> or bemoan the no, fact that Derby aren't playing. Yeah, I know, I know. Everyone hates international no, you breaks. No, you won't, because you'll be you'll be very much interested in seeing Wales. what happens when the deadline comes. Yeah, then the international <laughs> start. We'll be you'll be watching all our players. Be interested to see how many players of ours are actually gone out the door for the international squad. Uh, well, you're using act to Poland and Lawrence, Tom Lawrence to Wales, which was interesting, given he's not kicked a ball since December. Anyway, we can talk about that mm. in a moment. Ben is next up. Hello, Ben. Good evening, gents. You all right? Good evening. Yeah, we're very yeah, good. Hi, Thank ben. you. What's on your mind? Uh, I'd like to know what's in Eric's glass half full to begin with, because uh, <laughs> I'd like some. Um, I think the problem with Derby is there are more questions than answers, and that goes without saying, because when we had Koku, we played one way. It was pass it around till something happens, and then we might score. Uh, Rooney came in, we had the bounce, we had the manager bounce, where players were running, players were moving, they were wanting the ball. And then in the last three or four games... <laughs> We seem to have gone back to the Koku approach, where it's passed between the centre-backs. The one that got me really angry was the Forest game, and I looked at Max Bird. He had acres of space at times in that game, and he was just stood there, and I was, I was screaming at the TV, shout for the ball, want the ball, and he was just stood there. And that goes for a lot of the Derby players. They get to a position and they stop, and at the minute, there's no creativity, there's no movement, Wagon doesn't look interested. Kazim is getting angry after about the fifth minute. He's losing his head with how Derby are playing. And when I look at the squad and I see six players that are going to go back to the parent clubs, I see all the players that are out of contract, you can kind of understand why there's Derby have gone the way they have, is my kind of opinion mm. on it. Eric, on, on Ben's comment, and we've heard it a lot, not, not just from Ben, but, but numerous times over the previous weeks, that, yeah, the, the, the parallels between what we're seeing at the moment and the start of the season when, when Derby were, were still under Philip Koku, they are very similar, it seems. I, I think I think we've, we've seen more variation in the way we play, but again, the call is making some valid points. Ultimately, we know this squad isn't good enough. And without, without the run that Wayne Rooney had when he came in, we would be scrapping and fighting now. As it is, we've got that seven, eight point, nine point gap with Chef Wed. Uh, Birmingham, I think goal difference is massive as well because they're minus 20, I think. Chef Ward, minus 20, Birmingham. Coventry, minus worse than that. To Derby's minus four, 14. So I think we have got some plus factors that the way we've stopped, stopped being beaten easily. I think you take out the card. If we're still being hard to beat, our goals against have been really, really good. But I just think going back to the caller, you've mentioned some of the names there. They've just lost form. And that's what happens. You know, Bird has lost form. Uh, Sibley, when he's come in, hasn't given us what we need. But Jozwiak, you could start saying now, the big thing I've always had when the, the, about the Championship is that you can, if you've got seven or eight playing well each week, you can carry three and you can put subs on. At the moment, we're the other way. We really, in the last three four games, have lost the consistency. We've only got three or four players that have actually played and the rest are struggling and really scrapping. I can go back to the games. Forrest was the start of it. We were, we were putting the ball out of play without challenge. And that would really be concerning me that we can't even just pass the ball simply. It doesn't matter what system you're playing. Can we play forward more often? That's what's all of a sudden happened. We've started going and that's about a fear factor. Now that would concern Wayne Rooney. And he has mentioned when Chris has interviewed him after games, I've told him now I need more, more, more brave men in the team. I want more, they'll get on the ball, be positive with the ball. That's a massive mindset to change in a short period of time. And that really is why we are where we are. And I think it will still be the scrap and the dogfight, but we'll get there. 
and hopefully we can change it all around in the summer. Ben? Yeah, I mean, coming, kind of jumping the gun a little bit, say, this, say we survive and this season is done and dusted. Question to Eric, how concerned are you at the amount of loanees we've got, the amount of mm. out-of-contract players we've got? What, what on earth can we expect for next season? If we survive this um, season. Yeah, I'm massively worried because without a takeover, Wayne will be finding it very, very difficult to start. He, as much as he's been upbeat and saying he's got plan A, plan B, the one thing you need is that when you are planning now your recruitment for next year, you really need to know, right, what's my budget? Now, if the BZI thing goes out the window in the next 40, 48 hours, we spoke about this on Saturday, Ed and I and Chris, what happens then? This could take four, five, six months to get through. Unless they're going to come in and wave a magic wand and get it done quickly, that's the, the main, major concern I've got. Then Wayne starts saying, right, I want to go and purchase. We need at least six players. We've got nine who are out of contract with the loanees. So we're going to need minimum of six players. Now, to do that, we've got to, we've got to go and compete with people. We'll need money for that. Wayne Rooney hasn't signed a player yet, hasn't paid a penny for a player since he's come in. So ultimately, I think what he's looking at, his plan B will be, can he go and get the sort of loans, use his contacts in the game to get people like we, when we had Tamori, Mount, Wilson, where Frank Lampard used his influence. That might be another way of doing it with three or four signings. But at the moment, that's my concern, that he isn't really waiting to hear which which consortium's in control of the club and how much money he's going to have to spend? Yeah, um, I think with the takeover, I really, I'm really not bothered which way it goes anymore with BZI. Um, <laughs> I think everyone's a bit bored of them now, to be honest, whether they've got money or not. Mm. But it is concerning when our player of the seasons for the past two, three seasons have all been loan signings. Yeah, and correct. If, if, if you're planning, as we should be in the Premier League, we're not get, if we're having to get loan players in just to put sticky plasters over it. That's no way to set up a team for the Premier League. No. And at the minute, last season, I mean, with, uh, with I mean, sorry, with Lampard and everything, I loved it with Lampard. I loved Mount, Tamori, Wilson. But I was hoping, and this might sound bad, I was hoping we didn't go up because I'm thinking instantly you have got Tamori, Mount, and Wilson to replace just to get back to the level you mm. were when you got promoted. And you imagine yeah. well, how much them three are worth. Well, here's a question, Chilin. We've got, we've got at the moment, and you've already mentioned, Tamori won Player of the Year, Matt Clark. Would we, should we go and get the deal done now? We've got, we've got Kazim Richards done on another year. Should we go and get Matt Clark now from Brighton? Should we say, right, get a pre, pre-deal done because of the impact he's had as the loanee? There's one loanee. Would you want to secure him on a permanent deal? Hundred percent, because when, when I look at the other loan players in, um, I know a lot of people were bashing Mengi. Well, at the end of the day, he's not a right back. He's certainly not built like a right back, but he looked a lot better at centre back. Um, Man United are never going to sell him, obviously, because of his his potential that he's got. But Matt Clark is probably the only loan player that's come in this season, and that that you would say, yeah, we we need him. I appreciate the other five were brought in for depth, and I get that, and for depth players, they're good, but we're starting to now try and lean. We've got Louis Watson. We had it with Sibley, where we was hoping, oh, he's going to be the golden generation. We're putting so much pressure on these young kids. Things Mm. like Max Bird, Knight, Buchanan, they should be learning their trade in League 2, League 1, but at the minute, we're pinning all our hopes on them, that we don't get relegated, and I fear for them in the long term, because this is not a situation where they should be walking into for the first steps in professional football. No, in I agree. I've said all along, you need, you need to play experienced players. I've, all, I've always said that. When we had four, five, six under Koku end of last season, that's fine. We're safe. You can throw them in, but you would not want them in the dogfight. And I think that's that's where Wayne will be looking to say, I'm going to have to go with experience, more experience in the next two, three games. Um, but no, I fully agree. Ultimately, um, we really do have to wait and see when this takeover happens so and this, we can give Wayne Rooney a, a, a clear course of action to say, right, go and, go and get Matt Clark, get the deal done. You can get a pre-deal done now. Brighton would yeah. be happy if you said, right, how much money? 
I'm sure they would. Yeah, because he's probably, what, third or fourth choice at, at Brighton. When you look at the centre-halves, they have, obviously, mm. Lewis Dunk, England international. Uh, Veltman's playing pretty well. Uh, ben White can, can slot in at centre-back, the, the highly rated centre-back slash defensive midfielder. But, Ben and Eric, from what you're saying, that this all stems, again, from, and we've mentioned this over the years, how many managers have Derby had now over the last four or five years? Each of them come in with their own ideas, their own plans. Gary Rowett came in and, and signed his way and he brought in lots of experience. Then Frank Lampard comes in. Yes, the three loanies were brilliant. But the permanent signings then of what? Dwayne Holmes, Jack Marriott, uh, Martin Waghorn, Scott Malone, George Evans. George Evans. So Evans not at the club. Malone not at the club. Marriott not at the club. Holmes not at the club. It's only Waghorn that remains from Lampard. And that was only, what, two years ago. Philip Koku comes in and has no window and is, is thrown Kieran Dow and Ben Hamer and uh, Jamie Patterson. And none of those, well, Ben Hamer stayed for the season, but Patterson and Dow clearly didn't work. And then Koku brings in Mike Tavirik in January. He's now not at the club. It's not conducive, is it, Eric? For 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 this is probably why Derby having a season that they're having they're, at the moment. There's there's still players mm. that are there from probably four or five managers. Well, I, and yeah, it doesn't that doesn't help? I mean, over five six years, we've had seven eight managers now, and that as you say, that they're going to want their own ideas, their own players in. Unfortunately, the the, the phrase that always comes to mind, and I've been taught this the, all the time I've been in football: you live and die by recruitment. And at the moment, Derby are dying a little bit. That's why I want to go and get five, five low knees and then ask the young kids to come through because the recruitment in the last two or three years just hasn't worked, whether it's Lampard, Koku or Wayne Rooney hasn't done anything yet in the transfer market. But you do, you live and die by that. And ultimately, I mean, we're playing we're playing against a team tomorrow that if you wanted a model on recruitment, Brentford are the yeah. model to look at. Unbelievable what they've done. When you look at, you know, the, the Sol Watkins got money for him, they brought Tony in, they've already turned down something like 20 million for Tony. So that that's the model. Mm. You have a look at that. And I think Derby really do have to seriously look at that when Wayne Rooney gets the go ahead to say, right, come on then. I want a, I want a total hand on what goes on with the recruitment. And there's a club, Brentford, and you can throw Barnsley in here as well. They're getting a lot of love today, Barnsley, but a club that have a plan and they hire head coaches that fit with their model. And you have to say mm. that Derby's approach recently, you have to say, has probably been quite scattergun from the managers they've appointed. They've gone from Steve McLaren, Nigel Pearson came in, maybe to throw a few rockets about, didn't really work. Gary Rowett comes in, then Frank Lampard, they go for the young up-and-coming manager. Then it's Philip Koku, who's got a pedigree of, of bringing through academy players, and, and now it's Wayne Rooney. So, yeah, you, you, can, you can spin it both ways for sure. Ben, appreciate you getting in touch. Thank you very much for your comments. 0800 145 6161. If you would like your say, 81333 and at BBC Derby Sport. Uh, Neil, we're going to you shortly. And then David following on some of your messages. Brian says, should we sign Matt Clark? 100% we should. Steve, need the crowds back to give them the belief and confidence. Also a kick up, kick up the backside when needed. Survival is key for the remainder of the season. Reset and regroup for next season. And Stefan says, remember, Eric, when we spoke live on radio about not signing that striker a while back and how I said that a striker we could, that getting a striker could define our season. I mentioned Lucas Zhao at the time and also we were linked with Zeda Derzen, who scored another hat-trick over the weekend. 17 in 23 now, eight assists. Uh, Barry says, too many lambs and not enough rams at the moment. Too timid. We need to be brave, have a go and take people on. We're a little bit too safe at the moment, but Nathan Byrne has been the best signing of the season. He's absolutely class. Janet says, I'd like to win by any means, win dirty. But when you win playing nice football, then confidence comes. John says takeover should not have any effect on professional footballers. You play for the shirt and not the boardroom, but I still think we will stay up. Clive, I want to see the Rams playing the likes of Manchester United, Chelsea and Manchester City again in my lifetime. So I will say winning football. And finally, for now, Peter agrees. says, better win boring than be where we are now. 81333 and at BBC Derby Sport. Winning football or entertaining football? What is more important to you? Neil is next up. Neil, hello to you. Hey, how are you? Yeah, very good, thank you. Hi, Neil. Very good. You're, uh, it'll be, what, mid-afternoon where you are because you're, you're stateside? Yeah, 2.30 in the afternoon. Nice. Weather good? Cold. Cold. Where, where, where exactly are yeah. you? I'm in Connecticut. Oh, okay, so so that's yeah. So see, so seasonally I'm in between Boston and New York. So okay, nice. Well, it's, it's probably it's, it's still probably better than what we're going through at the moment. It's pretty pretty grey and miserable here. But anyway, I doubt you called to yeah. talk about the weather. So what's on your mind? 
Um, yeah, I wanted to um, ask Eric. I know he's been um, a little bit frustrated the last couple of weeks of our wide players um, coming in more narrow. Um, and, you know, watching it, I'm wondering if he's doing that because he's trying to create more combinations and get more players in on and around the ball in the final third in the 18-yard box to try and create more chances and score more goals. And he's kind of relying on the wits that come from the fullbacks. Yeah, it's a good point. And that, 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 when, when it's worked, that's when it's worked well. So when Josviak and Byrne combined, they only did it two or three times in the um, first half on Saturday. We're not getting that on a consistent basis. We've got Wagon, who's for me is a wide right player. We've played him through the middle virtually as a two alongside Kazim. So at the moment, there is a breakdown that whoever plays wide, certainly Byrne has been one of our best players and he really does need help. He, he looked as though when Roberts came on, all of a sudden we had some joy last 20, 25 minutes where both Roberts and Byrne uh, had a much more bigger say in how we play going forward. So, no, I agree. But w- what my argument is, you can have that movement on the inside when we're in the final third. What we tend to do is we tend to lose our width too early. And all the teams I ever played in, the, the, the or I coached with, it was always the width. You hold your width till you get your final third. Then you can start your movement. Then you can have your fullbacks. At the moment, we, we go missing. We ended up on Saturday with Forsyth, our furthest for, uh, player forward in a wide area. Wagon never, ever occupied that side. So that's the frustration. And you watch the good teams. You watch when you watch Man City play now. Mares never moves. Chalk on his boots. Sterling on the other side. Chalk on his boots. Get in the final third, they can do what they like. So I think you made a valid point, but I just think my frustration has been I get the midfield players or the forward or the central defenders bringing the ball out in the look to go wide, but they can't find anybody because they the actual the wingers have come off the line. We had a stage against Forest where we had three strikers, three two wingers and a striker. We had nobody in wide areas, and then we wondered why we lost possession of the ball. So yes, you've got it right. Connecticut bound, well done. I have been frustrated by the, the way that we have played in the, in the wide areas. Neil? Yeah. Yeah, no, I know. And it's like, you know, it's frustrating to watch as well. And, and particularly in the final third and in front of goal. And, you know, I don't know that Wayne keeps saying, you know, we're going to work on it. We need to learn from it. But, you know, I think one of the hardest things to bring onto the field from the practice ground is actually the finishing part of it. And, you know, you look at the stats mm. of these attacking players and they just don't have the stats, unfortunately. You know, and just no end product. It's almost like you have six Johnny Russells out there. Hmm. Oh, don't mention that. What we'd give to have him back. Um, the other <laughs> point, I don't know if you thought the same on Saturday, was that when we did get the crosses in, the, Wayne must have looked at it, at the video, and spoken to them today. We were all in a line. If you watch Arsenal, yeah. Arsenal Tottenham yesterday, watch when Arsenal got to the byline. They had an option at the near post, option, option at the far, the cutback area where they got the goal from, the equaliser. We didn't have that on Saturday. We had three or four strikers in a line where that's what was frustrating Wayne afterwards because he said we had no quality. We had no quality in the ball, but we also we didn't give the man on the ball enough options. And that's part of our yeah. problem, certainly, when we do get in good wide areas. Yeah. So yeah. What, would you, what would you do tomorrow then, Neil? For, for, for the visit of, of Brentford, we know that, that Rooney does seemingly have a couple of, of ways of going and, and he, he sometimes likes the three at the back and the width from the wing backs and often he goes with, with 4-3-3 three, three and, and wingers either side of, of Colin Kazim Richard. So what do you reckon he'll go with tomorrow? I don't know. I'd be tempted to go 3-5-2. But the problem is when you have that, that you kind of people like Roberts and um, Yozviak kind of don't fit into that. And they're like two pretty uh, creative players, unless you have Yovziak off Kazim. But I think that's his dilemma. You know, if he goes three five two, those players don't really fit in because you've probably got to have what Mengi, Shinny, and Knight in that three, and then up front you'd probably have Kazim and, and Gregory. Um, but me personally, I, I'd go the rest of the season three five two, uh, two up front, uh, a little bit more direct. You know, play the football in, in the second half, and um, like I said, scrape straight through to the end of the season hmm. Eric what do you reckon for tomorrow well that's your safeguard system if you go 3-5-2 what you have to be ready for tomorrow is Brentford will play with width you know they'll have Mbwemo um, Mbwemo on one side Fosso on the other Kano who, uh, Kano who I really like wasn't even in the starting 11 so I think we've got to make sure that we can stop them playing so our wing backs are important I think it's if we, if we go that way it's whether he brings Buchanan back leaves Forsyth in there leaves Burn. I, I, I prefer the 3-4-3. Three, three. 
but I can see where the call is coming from. The three in the end that really did play well, Wisdom's got to come back in. He didn't play Saturday, so he's got to come back in. So Edmondson might be the fall guy. Or do you play Edmondson with Shinny in there where we really can, like they did to us on Saturday in Millwall. Gary Rowe did a great job in setting the team up. We had the little boy Woods just stopping all the gaps where we couldn't get through. I think we need to have that because if we're going to play Louis Watson, I think we really do need to have an Edmondson and a Shinny in that five across the middle. Would you play Louis Watson tomorrow, no. Neil? Um, if I, no, I wouldn't. As much as I'd be tempted to, no. I think that uh, I think he's got to go with a little bit more experience. I like Edmonton. He's been unfortunate with the way he's been selected and substituted, unfortunately. But um, I think sometimes he's uh, having to have done it. But I do like Edmonton. But no, I think Watson, um, just cameo roles right now and then pick the right time. What a good call. Come back again, Mr. Connecticut. We definitely <laughs> want to hear you again. Well Neil, done. it is always good well to done. chat. And yeah, you you, you, uh, you really should get in touch more often because when you call, it, it is a pleasure to chat. And, uh, and it, it also, Neil, makes us sound more worldwide when we get calls from America. <laughs> so it's always, you know, it always keeps us up in that regard. Uh, but a great to chat as always and speak to you soon. Thank you very much. I was actually coaching alongside a Millwall fan on Saturday, which didn't help. Oh, that's always the worst. Oh, no. That's always the worst. Oh, My, yes, goodness. sympathies, sympathies. Well, let's hope that next, right. next year you can get your own back and when Derby play Millwall in the championship still. Neil, thank you very much. 0800 145 6161, free phone number. Still time to get in touch with 20 minutes of the programme to go. David, you've been very, very patient. I apologise for keeping you, but we'll be to you very shortly indeed. Andy says, recruitment has been woeful for a number of years now. Who have we brought in over the last five years who we can honestly say has been a success, excluding loans? Kazim Richards, Byrne, maybe Shinny, and that's it. Why isn't this side of the club ever looked at? Even more important than ever now, because the pool of players we can scout has been greatly reduced due to Brexit. Steve, on a similar theme, is this Groundhog Day? Same thing said every year, recruitment, loan these contracts should we sign Clark we have no money Nathan Byrne has been our best signing for years though surely Rooney would have not taken the job wouldn't have taken the job without assurances about money to buy players if he doesn't get it he will be gone Pete why is it that every team we play against is someone who is controlling the game and is a thorn in our side the only player we have who was capable is not on the field but managing us instead. A question for Eric. If McLaren is still sitting up in the stand, he must have the same view you have. Why can't he see the faults you comment on, especially on the forwards not holding their positions? Uh, And and quickly, Eric, again, I think we discuss this pretty much every week now. Uh, Firstly, Steve McLaren is still there. We had a lot of questions last week about, is he still at the club? Yes, he is still at the club. But his role is is different to to when he was manager. He's he's very much upstairs these days and, and not on the coaching field, per se. No, he's, he's more in an advisory capacity. And I think that when the decision was made for Wayne was taken over with the other three coaches, um, I think that was when his role changed. I think he's been instrumental in trying to keep the football side together, which they've done a good job when we had all the problems with the takeover. So Steve would have been really making sure that Wayne was focused totally on the football side of it. Um, he must have an influence. You can't have somebody with a Steve's experience. Um, but ultimately, the decisions on how they train and the team selection is down to Wayne. Uh, Steve's there for advice, and I'm sure he will be seeing the thing because that's not the way we played. If you look upon when we were together, 2013 to 15, you know you knew Johnny Russell would be in that wide area. Jamie Ward would be in that wide area. And we, we knew that we had to have width. That's the way that when people come and do what they do to us on Saturday, where they play that back three, and then they put them strong midfield players in. And the little boy, Woods, really did do a job. You need your width. You need to hold your width. So I'm sure uh, Steve will be giving his advice on that. But ultimately, it is down to Wayne. What happens on the train ground? And obviously, who picks the team? Mm. I've always liked Ryan Woods. He was another one at Brentford that, that caught the eye. And then yeah. he, he followed Rowett to Stoke, I think, didn't he? And didn't work out there. And he's obviously back with, with Rowett now at, at Millwall. Yeah, he, he did a great job, sadly. Yeah, he no, blocked I, the gaps. Yeah, you know when you talk about holding midfield player, he did that. He did that really, really well. And that's that's in the last two three games. That's where we have the midfield players have stifled us. Um, if you look at the previous game, we had the same when we played against Coventry. They did exactly the same. When you look what they had, you know they had Moet. Uh, sorry, when we go to Barnsley, Moet and Palmer, you know, trying to stop us playing. Uh, that's where we need. That's where we need. We need similar 
tomorrow because the one thing you don't want is that ball into Tony. You've got to make them make them have a scrap and a fight. Let Matt Clark and Andre Wisdom have the fight with Tony. Don't start letting them have the time and playing balls into his feet because he can hurt you that way as well. So that's why I'm I'm plugging for hopefully Edmondson and Shinny holding holding midfield players sitting there right in front so we're hard to beat and then try and hit them on the break. I tell you what, your lot in the northeast are probably gutted. They let re- they got rid of Ivan Tony. I know he was young and didn't really do much, but hey, what Newcastle would do for someone who just banged in twenty six goals. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> before you answer that, Eric, David has been very very patient. I've kept him for an awfully long time. David, good evening to you. Oh uh, yes, good evening. Good evening. Fire away. Uh, well, it's, a, uh, it's an extensive rant oh, really, good. that I've come on for. I've listened to the program in the previous weeks and. Uh, it's got me so frustrated. I thought I'm going to have to phone up and actually uh, you know, get things off my chest. Yeah, it's what we're here for, David. Go on. That's right. That's right. Well, start off with the manager. I think he's uh, a greater player than he was. I think he's very naive as a manager. His team selection every week is, is woeful. Um, you know, making five and six changes every game just does not uh, produce a settled side. Uh, playing position, uh, players totally out of position. Why go on on the left? Might as well stay in the dressing room. Uh, Knight is being moved from his, his, his natural position where he was quite effective. Um, you've got other players which are, you know, playing out of position. You've got natural wingers at the club, and with Lawrence coming back as well now. And he plays Wag on in that sort of uh, wide position on the left. You've got uh, Clark as great a defender that he is, and I think he is, but... Why send him up for all these corners? Because I think every time he heads the ball, he thinks he's got to head it out for a corner. Hmm. Because that's, uh, he, he doesn't know how to head a, a, a producer an attacking header. And the other thing I would say as well is regarding um, uh, Eric's comments about we need uh, experience in the midfield and if we're going to survive, Louis Watson is the only one that can actually play that type of attacking role at the moment. Nobody else is in the club apart from Billick who's now injured and out for the rest of the season. Watson's the only one who's come in and can actually see a pass and, 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 and be uh, uh, attacking with his approach to the game. Play him. You couldn't play him alongside Shinny, could you? Because he, he, he wouldn't have anywhere near the physicality required for that. I'd play him as a 10. I'd play him where Sibley played, because I think that's what you saw on Saturday when he did come on. When he was 35, 40 yards, he was the only one that could see that forward pass. But I wouldn't want to see him playing where, like, Jason Knight's been playing alongside Shinny. No. I'd see. I'd like to see Edmondson and Shinny there. That, And then if he wants to have a go at Watson, that's when you give him the freedom to say, right, you go and be a 10. You go and find us that pass. You go and get into the box. Because at the moment, we haven't had a midfield player in the box for I don't know how long. So I can understand why you're saying give him the chance. But I just think to give him the best. Oh. Behind him. And then he's got more of a free roll at home. We got you. Sorry, Eric, we lost you there for a second. David? No, no, I, I think when he came on, he came into that uh, midfield position and he was, he was creating so much from that position, putting these uh, you know, uh, balls straight through to the forward line. And it's all right having a player of that type, but you've got to have the players around him that can actually play that type of game. They've got to be able to receive a ball in a tight position. They've got to be able to control it when it gets to them. And I think uh, Watson has, has demonstrated that he can get that ball forward from that deeper position. And the other no, thing I, I would say, I think, uh, yeah. take issue with with Eric as well is that I agree with most things he's saying about the actual tactics and uh, you know the things we've all said tonight about team selection, etc. But um, Eric, I wish you stopped saying that. You know, when uh, they go in at half time, that I know what Wayne, Wayne Rooney will be saying to the side now. I know what Wayne will be saying that, uh, you know, if we have an injury, a long injury like we did a couple of games ago, but we don't know what he's saying to the team because no matter how long he has at half-time or doing an injury, they'll still come out and play the same rubbish football. All this tippy-tappy stuff around the back is getting us nowhere. And we've got to have more thrust and attack. And I think we should play at least two up front tomorrow night. We've got to go out with a bang. And I think entertaining football will produce winning football. Okay, so you, so you, well, what one leads rant. to other? There's a yeah. lot of good points come out of that, David. Yeah, absolutely. And and hey, we we are very much a vehicle to to be ranted or to use to rant. That's fine, David. On um, what was I going to ask you? I completely forgot what I was going to ask you. Um, it'll come back to me. Just talk amongst yourselves for a moment. 
Uh, so would you play? <laughs> David, David, I've, I remember. Hold on, hold on. When, on, when um, sorry, on. I remembered it now, Eric. Sorry. Uh, so when six, six games, six winning games, six games won in eight, David. And to be fair, I think Derby did probably go more direct than we've ever seen them. Is that fair? So when they were playing that way and they were winning those games, albeit Rooney said that he wasn't overly enthused by the performances, were you happier then with with what you were seeing from Derby? No, not at all. I don't think the performers have, have torn any trees up whatsoever. I think it's all been pretty uh, uh, dour stuff, to be honest with you. And if you think back to the uh, January transfer window, where he now has five or six low knees for five places, the squad, prior to those um, uh, low knees signing on, the squad was quite settled. We were getting results before those low knees came in. I think the low knees coming in as well has upset the balance of the squad when we were just starting to get things together. I can't see that because without the low now, without the low knees, we wouldn't have had the. Don't forget when they came in, they came in in January, and our record in January was good. And I think what it did, it just made one or two give a kick up the backside to those in the squad. And we've all of a sudden now got a little bit more depth in terms of Roberts coming in in wide areas. I think Edmondson's done okay. When he's played at the back in a three, he, when he played in midfield, um, I think it's too early for the other two, Baningimi and uh, Mengi. Mengi had a much better game at Barnsley. But ultimately, I think we needed that competition for places because with the injuries that we had, we're losing Billick and Lawrence. We did need extra players. Otherwise, we were going back to the mother care bench, you know, where we're having six, seven academy players. And I think m- most of the callers tonight have agreed you can't, it's not a time to be thrown in three, four academy players when we're scrapping for our lives. But just going back to the call, ultimately we are where we are because is this squad good enough? Well, no, it's not. I don't think it will. It'll never take us up. But one other thing to mention before I go is the fact that Scott Malone, we've got a left back there that's been let out on loan to Millwall. Fortunately, he didn't play against it on Saturday. But Scott Malone, as far as I understand it, has scored seven goals from left back from Millwall this season, seven goals. He's got a he couple of crackers. As, uh, seven yeah. goals, he would he'd, be playing for Derby. He'd be level with Kazim Richards. And some of those, David, I don't know whether you've seen some of those goals. He's turned into prime Roberto Carlos with some of them. Absolute screamers. Um, that, that, there are some players and clubs that you just think fit. And Scott Malone and Millwall do seem to fit. And he had a, he had a good spell actually there previously when he was there permanently. And when, Dar- uh, when Millwall play three at the back, Left wing back, Eric, is his position, isn't it, Scott Malone? Because actually going forward, he's always looked quite useful. He got a couple yeah. of goals for Derby, didn't he? Yeah, I had no problem with him going forward, but his defensive duties, was he was inept. He was nowhere near good enough, which is why we, when we look now, I think we're in a better position. Albeit, yeah, but that's, listen, credit to him, change of club, change of attitude, and then also a manager that says, I'm not going to ask you to do the defensive side. I want you to be an attacking wing back. Um, I mean, they played, they played a lad on Saturday who did really well, actually, Wallace. But he was just like a, he was a true defender, which suited um, Gary with his system that he played, where he really did deprive us of the ball uh, and the spaces that we needed. But no, listen, good luck to Malone. He's done well since he's gone there, but I wouldn't swap him for Buchanan at the moment, even if he is having a little bit of a rough time. Oh, David, who's that? Oh, so it's my wife's phone going off. It's okay. Oh, okay. That's Wayne Rooney. That's Wayne Rooney asking you to pick. The... No, it's Wayne Rooney asking you to pick the team. Quick That's it. Pick up the phone. Yeah, I might as well. Exactly. So even coming in as an advisory <laughs> role, uh, David. It's been fantastic to chat. Thank you very much indeed for for getting in touch and enjoy the rest of your evening. Um, excellent and honestly use us as a as I say. If you have something to get off your chest and rant, then that's what we're here for. That's exactly what Monday nights are for. Uh, you're running out of time. If you want to do it tonight, though. 0800 145 6161. We'll, we'll be here next week, though. It's the international break after Saturday's game away at Stoke. But then well, we'll still be here to talk about the Stoke game. And then it's the international break. Uh, and then it's the final games of the season, the final eight games of the season. Uh, and yeah, it might be the hold on to your hats time. Simon says the downturn in results comes down to a combination of three things for me. Clearly, the loss of Bielik was huge, but teams have worked out that if you shut CKR down, you shut Derby down going forward. And, of course, the simple lack of a quality goal scorer. Uh, Steve, the gardener, says regarding Koku, don't forget it was he who signed Byrne, Yuzviak, Bielik, CKR. He also gave votes of confidence to Knight, 
Bird, Shinny, Forsyth, Sibley. And didn't he also sign David Marshall? How many Rams fans also would want BZI as new owners, given the way the club has been treated? Andy, it's fine margins in this league. Forsyth could have had two goals before they scored, but as we've seen all season, failure to take chances has come back to bite us. We just haven't scored enough goals and we probably need to be a bit more direct with two up front and ten behind them using two wing-backs to create the width. Kev says when we played Huddersfield, didn't Edmondson play in the middle of midfield? He attacked them with headers and scored. Play him there again tomorrow. Eric, you're much better placed than I am to answer that. Did, did Edmondson play? That was the game he changed it at half-time. And Edmondson actually came off at half-time, didn't he, of that game? He scored and was taken off. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I'd, I'd play Edmondson in midfield tomorrow, I really would. I think he's comfortable on the ball. And I just think that'll be um, him and Shinny. And then you can play a 10. Whether it all the talk that Wayne's had, whether it's a G up for Sibley, might play him as the 10, might play Louis Watson as the 10. So certainly if you're going to do that uh, and play three at the back with four across there and then have one in behind, that really would that would cause a problem. It's who we put up alongside Kazim because certainly Wagon hasn't really done anywhere near enough in there. Gregory could have, could have, could have got the four wins that we needed if he took the chances he's had. So he just mm. hasn't looked anywhere near the player that we thought he was. So, yeah, it is, again, it's down to it's a tricky, tricky one tomorrow. Because... It's gone now. That line, we, we, your line needs oiling, Eric. As it was once last week, a couple of times tonight. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll get Eric back. For the final, what, few moments of the programme, but it's always nice to, to, say, to say goodbye. Uh, Tom Lawrence is also another one that, that's an intriguing prospect because he is back tomorrow. He will be in the squad, but he won't be able to start the game, as Wayne Rooney said today. He said that he's fit and he's training and he will be in the squad but won't play the entire game. So I wonder how much we will see of Tom Lawrence tomorrow. And he has also been named in the Wales squad for their friendlies, which did take us a little bit by surprise given that he's not played, hasn't kicked a ball since December. Yet Wayne Rooney saying today that it's not a problem because he's had a word with the Wales hierarchy and they're quite happy with the training regime he's on. He says he'll get some good training with Wales. We've got no problem with that. And it's also good for him to get some game time, which he's hoping in one of the the games that that Wales will play, one of the three games, that uh, he might get some game time. But he certainly has been missed. No, he's Marmite, but 10 goals he's got. 10 goals he got last season. And what Derby could have done with those 10 goals this season. Uh, Tomorrow, then, Brentford and Burton and Derby and Blackpool are all in action. Derby at home to Brentford. That's a seven o'clock kickoff. And Burton Albion also in action away at Blackpool in League One. Eric? I'm back with you. For the final minute. You've only got a minute now. That was... I was... I was embarking on some uh, some furious filling there until seven o'clock. So I'm glad you're back right, no for the final minute. Tom so, Lawrence, go on. Go Tom on. Lawrence. I'm delighted Tom Lawrence has gone with Wales because that that means they can get him fit and hopefully give him some game time. And that'll be great for us coming back with eight games. Um, and anything else that you want to ask quickly, I can answer. Uh, I think I've I've got no more questions for you um, but apart from <laughs> for the final 45 seconds. Um, this is it. I mean, I, I did wonder earlier, like ten games to go. Clearly. Run of form isn't great, but you look at the league table and you think, I don't know, as soon as I mention just a, what a win does, then people go, yeah, but where's that win coming from? They've not won in five. But what a difference it would make. They're only two points off Huddersfield and Forest, who are two points further up. They're only five off, I think, a clutch of teams in sort of safe mid-table. So it, it, it just takes something to get the ball rolling again. It's just a question of, of when it comes and, and really the need for it to come quickly. The, the winnable games. It's the championship. The winnable games. We're playing the top six, so we should be encouraged by that and really go into the game confident for tomorrow night. Excellent. Short and sweet. Eric, thank you very much indeed for your time, and we shall speak tomorrow. You'll be at Pride Park with their doors, and fingers crossed, the Rams can get a much-needed win. Yes, sir. I look forward to speaking to you tomorrow. BBC Sounds. Music, radio, podcasts.